Hey there everybody and welcome to the channel, I'm your host Rama, and in today's video we are going to be playing in the Ko Perico heist. I'm going to be doing all the setups and then the heist itself to showcase just how fast you can do it. Now there are videos out there that show you being able to complete this heist in under 30 minutes, but that's with people completely speedrunning everything and then when they actually do the heist only taking the main target without actually going for the secondary rewards. We are going to be trying to get the elite challenge, collecting all the rewards, getting out undetected, and and doing the setups as fast as possible. So, let's start that stopwatch really quick. Of course, it's gonna be a couple seconds while we're still starting up the first setup, but it shouldn't be too bad. So gather intel, and we got to go to Procopio Beach. Where are we? Not near that spot, I will tell you that. I just loaded in this session, so wasn't sure where the game randomly spawned us. Now, the first thing you want to do with your sub is fast travel. Now, you should only fast travel after you've done your first heist, because if you haven't, then it's gonna cost 10, per fast travel, which is honestly a lot of money, especially if you do it a couple of times. So instead, I just do it after you finish the first one, which is only $2,000 per fast travel. Definitely worth it because it saves you a lot of time overall. Now I could, I guess, fly my Sparrow, but I'd probably lose about two or three minutes off at the time and we're trying to speed run this. Now, the first part about gathering intel is pretty dang easy to do. Once you get the mapping and the pathing out, it's, uh, it's not too hard at all. So that's exactly what we're gonna do is first of all, get into our Sparrow. I would use a vehicle like the Oppressor Mark II, but I actually don't own it on this account just because it's, uh, it's a lot of money. I don't wanna buy a terabyte. Now I guess that's kind of funny judging that I've got 18 mil in the account right now. But uh, yeah, I, I'm still pretty stingy when it comes to my money and I'm, I'm trying to save up just in case for December if there is a pretty big DLC added. Maybe, just maybe, I'm gonna need a lot of money for it. So first things first is we gotta steal the Valium. I still never know how to pronounce this plane. The Valium, the Valume. The vel I, I don't know. Either way, I, I like to call it Valium. So we're going to shoot a missile right at the car and these people over here, and that's going to clear just about 90% of them. And then there's like two dudes left. You don't really need to worry about the plane V damage. Even if you do hit the plane, like basically with a direct missile, it's it doesn't really die. So let's just clear this guy. Let's clear this guy. And there you go. Everybody's dead. I mean, we're quite low health. But even then, that's all you have to do. This is like the easiest of... Actually, I would say all the setups are incredibly easy. The thing that I, I really find weird about the Ko Perico heist is it's it's honestly easier than a lot of the missions in the game like I would say honestly the Dr. Dre missions are harder than the Ko Perico heist and not only that but it takes longer to do the Dr. Dre missions I just always find that quite funny so here we go we are flying now in our Valium and this is obviously going to eat into a little bit of our time I hate that they spawn it across the map I don't know why they can't spawn it maybe towards like, I don't know, Vespucci Beach, which is all the way where your yacht usually spawns off the uh, the coast. I I do find it a little annoying sometimes that you have to, to fly all the way from here. The best spawn location I think you can get for the Valium is the Fort Zancudo spawn, which is, it's quite a ways ahead. I mean, the Fort Zancudo spawn is over here. So yeah, it's gonna take me a lot longer than if I were to get a better spawn, but it doesn't really matter too much. We are almost there. We're at the end of the city basically which isn't too bad actually we're not even at the ending of the city we're basically smack dab in the middle of the city right now but at least when it comes to the Valium it's not that slow of a plane I mean we're going about a buck 30 right now which is not bad so I can't complain if this was like a dodo oh my god imagine if they made you fly the dodo across the entire map I hate it for MC business sales I would hate it even more for doing the KO Perico setup so basically once we make it past the docks over here we're going to be sent over to El Rubio's which is something I always find weird you'll notice my plane is actually colored red but when we go over to El Rubio's it turns orange for some reason I've never ever figured out why Rockstar didn't just this plane is always red so I don't know why they made the plane that lands orange. I've never ever figured that one out, but let's just go down, maybe pick up some speed, and there you go. Nice. Okay, we have finally arrived at Ko Perico. Is it is it Ko or is it Ko Perico? I don't know. Either way, actually, our plane is gray colored this time. Okay, interesting. I've never seen a gray one before. Normally, it's always orange. Well, either way, we're gonna do the very simple maneuver, which is steal the bike and then make our way straight to the communications tower. I don't ever worry about the secondary loot, about spotting it because that eats into time. And not only does it eat in the time, but 
it always spawns in the same areas. Like, I always go to the same path when I'm looting, and I just kind of take what's there because I also try to get the elite challenge. If I'm playing on uh, hard, unfortunately, this is normal, as I said. But when I'm playing on hard and you get the elite challenge, you're going to get an extra 100k. So I usually just try to fill my bag as it is and then get out as quickly as possible. So let's get on the dirt bike and let us get out of here. So as I said, this is fairly simple to do. All we're going to do is a bit of off-roading up here. So we're going to drive over towards here and then we're going to climb off the road away from that vision cone. And then, yeah, this is like, it's just super easy. Once you get the pathing down, it is incredibly easy. The first couple of times I did this heist alone, I lost my mind trying to get around the guards because I had no clue what I was doing. But uh, yeah, just go off road for this part and then you come down to this little split here. You drive through the gates and this part basically cuts through all those big old cameras around there. And then we continue going through here. And then when it comes to this part, it looks a little tricky, but it's honestly not that hard. We just cut through off-road around the first vision cone. There you go. And then for all these guys here, you might think they all look like they're going to spot you. They don't. You literally just drive right through here. And then, uh, well, I guess we're going to wait for this Jeep to cross really quick just so we don't get spotted. And perfect. And then we drive around. And there you go. We just got around to all of those cameras. That's like the hardest junction of them all. And uh, it's pretty easy to get around, honestly. We got another dude here. There's actually a lot of guys driving, but we're all fine. That guy can't actually see you if you're low enough, and that's exactly what we are. This guy just turned around, which means we can drive around him. And there you go. A little bit of an exaggerated driving experience, but it's not too hard at all. Then we're just going to drive around here and continue on our way. I don't really care about that buried stash too much. It's only 15,000. I mean, sure, 30,000 is not bad, but we're going for the big payouts with this. This heist. So we've already made our way to the communications tower. You can see just how easily this can be done. And oh, oh, okay. Well, I guess uh, we're just gonna run over this because <laughs> my my character doesn't want to do otherwise. I can already see as well the uh, the thing. Well, I don't know what you call it, but the communications box we'll call it. It's right here, which is actually a really really good location instead of having to climb all the way up. And now we get to see my wonderful math skills. So we gotta get 32, obviously the 7 has to be this one, and uh, it can't be a 4, right? Wait, that doesn't work, yeah, so it's uh, it's 22, and then we just do the 1, there you go, 32. That was a pretty easy uh, math thing to do, we got our target, and connection successful. This is by far the easiest hack in the game, I, I have to say. And uh, yeah, now we just leave. So we just got to look on our app really quick before we do leave and just, you know, see what El Rubio has in store for us. Hopefully, just hopefully, we get the pink diamonds. But you never know. Let's just keep on cutting through and make it to the basement. Here we go. Please don't be the scene, Samito. Oh, we actually got the pink diamond. Okay, sweet. So. I guess even though we're doing it on a normal, I'm getting like a Scene Sumido level payout. So I guess not too bad. All we have to do now is kill ourselves. Uh, well, let me just climb up here. I don't know if this fall is... This should be a far enough fall to kill me. It, I think it'll be faster for me to do that than wait for the cutscene with the guard. This is what I'd highly suggest to do. They'll literally just climb up the first level, the guard tower, and then just jump off. And that should, in, in theory, just... Yeah, perfect. You'd think killing you sends you back to the mainland, just like getting caught too many times, but no, it just counts as a failure, which means uh, it spawns me right next to my plane, and there you go, we're gone. So that was fairly quickly. I mean, I'm on about 10 minutes of recording, and I can see how long since we started. So, yeah, it's been about 10 minutes. We've done the first and uh, hardest of all, not the hardest, but the longest taking of all the preps, which was that one. So, fairly easy. And then what we're going to do is, while loading into the mainland here, as soon as it lands me, instead of just flying back to my Kosatka or whatever, I'm just going to literally teleport there by starting a new session. So I'm not going to call in my spare. I'm just going to find new session, invite only, and boom. Because I have my spawn location set to the Kosatka, it's incredibly easy. You'll see we're just instantly loading into it. So that saved me, I don't know, maybe about 30, 40 seconds. Not a huge amount of time, but it definitely helped me save a bit of time. So something I would highly suggest to do when, when doing that first prep is just instantly set your spawn location to the Kosatka, and then you can start up the next setup instantly. Now the next setup we're going to do is one that can either be really lucky or really unlucky. And this has to do with the weapons. If you get the Meriwether HQ, you might as well just spawn into a new session, which is what we'll do if we get it. So, Marksman, and there you go, Meriwether 
another HQ. Marksman, I mean, it's just painful to get that. It, it wastes time. So instead of doing the Merryweather HQ, as you'll notice, I'm just going to load into a new session. Literally takes like five seconds. So just do that. Literally every time you get Merryweather HQ for the weapons, just ignore it because it takes maybe about five, six minutes to follow them and then another three or four minutes to actually complete the mission where if you do the other ones that are in the city, it takes maybe two, three minutes a lot faster. So let's try it again. Let's go back to prep. Let's go back to weapon loadout, marksman, and there you go. Much, much easier. We get to go to the Penrith building. I really wanted to say something else there. You know they did that on purpose. There's no way they just said, haha, Penris. So, yeah, that's pretty easy. And that shows you just how quickly you can get rid of the the worst of all the uh, weapon setups. Now, sometimes you'll get Merryweather HQ again and again. I think the worst I've had it is three times in a row. But even then, I mean, it's just worth it. Just It takes like maybe 30 seconds of resetting if you get it. And, and then you just ignore it. So now we got to go to the Penrose building. This is the same every time. So it doesn't matter if you're going to 707 Vespucci. As long as it doesn't say Merryweather HQ, you're basically in the clear. And uh, all you do is you break into an office building. You kill maybe like five, six people. And then you steal the weapons and you fly back. It's incredibly easy. And it's definitely one of the... Honestly, all the missions are easy. I wouldn't say this is one of the easier missions because they're all pretty dang easy. Uh, the cutting torch is definitely the easiest. You put on a hard hat and you you steal a cutting torch and then leave. That one takes maybe two minutes. Uh, I would actually say the hardest one is maybe the long fin one where you, you have to actually steal the long fin and get a trailer. That one's a little painful. I personally don't own a Phantom Wedge and I can't call in my MOC, you'll notice, when we do that one. So I'm actually going to have to steal a, a trailer of some sort. So that is... Which building is it? Is it... Uh, this one here? I think, it, yeah, it's this one, as you can tell by the giant sign. So, uh, where do we enter it? I don't actually see the roof entrance. Here it is, okay? And this is actually perfect. They will send, uh, helicopters after you when you do this one. So, you want to get the buildings that have a pretty flat roof so that you can land your heli and get in fairly easy and out. One of the buildings has a really weird shape and you have to land the helicopter kind of oddly on it, but this one we are all good on. So, all I'm gonna do is pull out my gun and boop, there you go, he's a goner and a boop and you are all goners there you go and then let's uh, just launch a grenade i like to just bounce the grenade off the wall and then it kind of kills these guys there you go very easy to do and uh after that let's just oh i'm out of snacks well i guess i'll grab some snacks uh let me let me go into there oh no 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 there's a guy over here still left hello good sir how are you doing okay we're all good now we get on this wall and a uh, boop you're a dead guy and there you go, you're a dead guy too. And I don't really care about the recipes, they're not gonna do anything to me. So let's open up this really quick. Open the gun locker, thank you. And then all we have to do is wait for it to let me hack the computer, which is also pretty easy. I don't know why they put in this like extra long animation here. Normally when it comes to like hacking the computer, you instantly start hacking, but we gotta wait for our character to like do stuff. So we gotta do 35, 78, 12, 88. I see an 88, but that's not the one we're looking at. There it is. Boom. Pretty easy to do that hack. As long as you just find one of the four numbers you're looking for, it's pretty easy. And there you go. That is basically the entire mission. So this prep, we just have to steal the guns, which is in the safe. So here are the guns and let me collect. Now when it comes to your weapon loadout, honestly, just don't pick the bad ones. Marksman by far is the best in my opinion. Is it gonna let me, there you go, I was like, huh? But uh, yeah, Marksman is, is the one that I think I picked, which is, it gives you like an assault rifle Mark II. Would highly suggest to do that one over the others because I mean, it's definitely the best of all the weapons. So you'll notice now we get helicopters above us and uh, yeah, it really doesn't matter. These helis, we can just fly away from. There you go. And uh, boom, there you go. Now I'm gone. Bit of a weird maneuver from our helicopter there, but it doesn't matter too much. Now I am going to request my Hosatka because it'll probably spawn a bit closer. So let's do that. I'm hoping that it spawns on the beach over here, which will be, yeah, a lot closer. So let's see. Where is it? Perfect, yeah, it spawns on the beach. And what's also great is that when it spawns on the beach, a lot of the other setups are also fairly close. So uh, yeah, now there are a lot of people that tell me sometimes in my comments to, uh, or at least when I did my 10 hour live stream uh, the other day, to bring my Kosatka onto the land. But honestly, it's like a 10 second fly over the water, not even to, to get into the Kosatka. And I feel like you would actually spend more time driving it on land than it would just landing your helicopter in it because you can see just how quickly you can land your Sparrow on the Kosatka. So it's been 15 minutes now and we are two of the, what, six things done? It's 
It's the weapons and the gather intel, and then we have three, so yeah, it's six in total. Not too bad so far, and uh, let's keep on going. So heist prep complete, thank you game. Now we get out, and we go all the way over here, all the way to the front of our Kosatka. All right, I should get snacks, but honestly, I'm a little lazy, so I'm not gonna bother right now. Um, but yeah, I probably, you know, I'll get them after we start this prep. So let's do uh, approach vehicles. I will do the long fin because I feel like it's a bit easier on the mission compared to the Merryweather one where you have to get inside the boat. Uh, but before we leave, I am going to grab some snacks. So let's, let's head down here, go down into the bottom of our boat. It's actually really nice that this does have snacks in general because I hate having to go to like other buildings and boop, 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 boop. And then we got a spin. I'm sprunk. There you go. And perfect. Okay. Snacks are full. You see, I've been thinking about it, and I think the reason E. Cola is drunk a lot more, or drank, I don't know how you say it, it is swallowed a lot more than Sprunk is down to the fact that it is first in your snacks compared to Sprunk. Sprunk is all the way at the end of your snacks, and E. Cola is at the beginning. So when you're spamming snacks just on uh, up on the D-pad, you use E. Cola a lot sooner than you use Sprunk, which means when you refill your snacks, you might not have even used your Sprunk. I think that's an unfair advantage. Team Sprunk, Team Sprunk moment. Anybody out there? <laughs> okay, either way, let's make our way to the Vinewood Police Station. Which one is that? Oh, that's the furthest one. That's that's lame. It's actually not that bad if it's that one because we still got to bring it basically over to the uh, the Merryweather docks when we drop off the boat. So what's going to happen here is to steal the long fin, we need a, a uh, semi-truck of some sort. So if we see one on the way there, I will grab it. But it doesn't look like any are spawning and unfortunately I don't own the phantom wedge what a lot of people do is they own a phantom wedge and then they just spawn it in next to them and that's how they do it saves a lot of time I definitely will say but unfortunately for me I don't have 2.4 million dollars plus another two million dollars to spend on a vehicle warehouse so I'm not gonna you know drop almost five million dollars just for one minute of saving time so yeah we'll, we'll just chalk that off and add it up to my overall timer so what's gonna happen here is we're just gonna fly over the police station very quickly it's gonna get them mad at me They're there you go. And then we got to find a truck cab. So uh, let's see where the nearest one is. Oh, wow. These ones are... Well, let's go for this one because that, that's definitely a bit closer. Still pretty far away. I'm looking for a truck cab as we fly over. Just maybe one while we're driving or, you know, driving on the road. Doesn't look like there are any, though. Sometimes you'll get lucky with the spawns and they'll just be driving around. But as you can see, it, it's literally like a 30-second flight over here. And where is it? I know you have to kill a couple guards to get the cab, but it's, it's nothing painful. Yeah, right over here. Okay, now I don't want to shoot missiles because these are just normal truck cabs. Okay, let's go over here and land my helicopter. Nice. Okay, and pull out me gun. Oh, I missed it. All right. Hello, are these? No, these aren't the guys. Isn't there a security guard? Yeah, this guy. Boop, you're dead. And uh, I don't think we have to worry about any of the other guys. No. All right, perfect. And let's just take the poiple cab because it looks pretty good. Okay, well, as you can see, that was fairly easy. Now we just have to set our waypoint over to the long fin, about a mile away. Could this gate open any slower? Thank you, game. All right, so, yeah, let's despawn my Sparrow while I'm at it, just so I can get it back later. So return options, return moon pool. I would highly suggest to get your hands on a Sparrow. That is the number one necessity when it comes to doing the KO heist fast. Like, sure, you can own an Oppressor Mark II and probably do it pretty quick, but when you fast travel, guess what? Your oppressor's gonna be destroyed and you can't spawn it, which means you'd have to take a dinghy out to shore or drive it on the land. It's just way faster to use a Sparrow. I would highly suggest to use one. But with that aside, let's make our way over to the Longfin. Now what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a bunch of police officers get mad at me, and I'm just going to ignore them all and just back on up right into the trailer and steal the boat. And then we're gonna drive all the way down to the docks and deliver it. It's a pretty easy mission overall, and I do like this one a lot better than the Merryweather mission to do the uh, the sonar jammer. Honestly, they're both about just as fast anyway to, uh, to actually get onto El Rubio's land. So uh, let's see and go over here. Oops, didn't mean to crash in you, but I guess that works as a pretty good break. So let's go over here. Let's reverse. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, there's a lot more cops here than I thought, but sorry. Sorry, didn't see you there. Whoops. Oh, wait, did we miss? Oh my god, I actually missed it. Okay, that one's on me. Let me just back up again. Perfect. And now we go. There you go. So pretty dang easy to do that. Now to lose the cops, it's also very easy. See what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive right here. 
And then I'm going to step out of my vehicle and let's just do this. Huda! There you go. You lose cops that way. A lot of these missions in the game, you don't lose cops if you kill yourself. But for some reason, this one, you do. Now, unfortunately, we need to get a car, which means I guess, oh, oops. <laughs> because I don't know why it spawned me here. This is like the worst spawn location. But let's just take this car and uh, I guess, can we drive through the parking garage? Can we drive through here? Yes, perfect. Okay, so let's just go through here and nice. All right, back at the truck. So a little painful, but we are all good. And uh, yeah, as you can see, just kill yourself. It's way faster to just end your life than to to try and actually lose the cops. You're gonna waste so much time, especially with this slow truck. I mean, the truck's not that slow. It is a Phantom after all. I actually really like the Phantom for how fast it is. But uh, yeah, in general, literally just, just poob yourself in the face and then just yeah, continue on driving. Now that's all you have to do for this setup. Once you're done with this one, you never have to worry about it again. Well, obviously until you start the heist up again. So we've done this one. We That means we got three left and all the rest are pretty easy. I would say the plasma cutter is the most annoying out of the bunch. For the plasma cutter, we got to, uh, well, I guess we'll talk about it when we do that one. Let's just deliver this. Ooh, drive over here. I wonder how fast we're going. Actually 80. That's not bad. It's pretty sad that we are towing an entire boat that probably weighs a few thousand pounds there. And we've got the trailer and a massive truck bed as well faster than the post-op van can literally drive at, at top speed it is so sad how bad the post-op van is for the motorcycle club sales I'm honestly contemplating just not doing the motorcycle club sales because they are so painful but either way we got 0.8 miles to go and uh, yeah this is just a really easy setup in general how long we've been going about 22 minutes so far I don't actually know how people manage to do this in under 30 minutes. I actually don't think it's really possible. I guess if you, it's possible to do it under 30 minutes if you do it without the time added in, is what I would say. You know, like the time added in between missions and, and flying there and everything. But overall, I would say that 30 minutes is way too fast to do this heist in general. It's going to take you a lot longer. So let's make our way over to the docks and this one's going to be done. And then we've only got the three easy ones left. Cutting Torch takes... A very short amount of time maybe three minutes at max and then uh, the other two uh, the fingerprint one's pretty easy to do as well you barely have to do any work for that one the only one that's a little oh oh I overshot it oops 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 let's just uh well you know what honestly I hate that gate anyway I wonder if we can no that's gonna take so much effort oh we have to turn this whole thing around though oh my god uh, just give me a minute. Yep, 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 yep. I, I think we actually might detach the trailer here in a second, which is kind of on me, but... Oh, okay, we actually got it. We're good. We're good. Okay, now we just gotta hope this gate opens. Opens as me! Oh my god, as I said, this is like the worst gate ever. But we're all good. We only lost like 10 seconds there, and we have delivered the trailer. Sweet. Okay. So, now that that's done, we are going to do the final three preps, which are the easiest of the bunch. I like to do the hardest ones first, so you don't have to do them later. So let's call in our Sparrow. Spawn's right in front of us. I love the Sparrow. It's just so good. Actually, no, we don't even need to do the Sparrow again. Once you do these uh, deliveries, just teleport back into your Kosatka. It's that easy. There's no point to put in the effort when you can just save time by doing that so we're gonna TP into our Kosatka boom already loaded in and let's start up the next prep alrighty then so let's run all the way to the back go over here up the stairs and around the corner okay and that was fairly easy let's just plop around here and oh oh I didn't mean to do that I, I, I messed up there you go okay we're all good I'm on a time crunch here come on Perfect. Okay, so equipment. So we got to do plasma cutter, fingerprint, cloner, and cutting torch. Let's do the plasma cutter first. I think that one personally is the worst of the three because not only I just don't like how you have to you have to deal with the cars that try to chase you, especially in the sparrow because you have basically no protection. It's pretty easy to actually just get your face clapped on and, and die and squirt ketchup everywhere. So I do got to be a little careful, but apart from that, it's pretty easy to do the plasma cutter. So let's go over to the safe house. Now, for the safe house, you just gotta run right in, take a picture of the planning board, and leave. It takes maybe 10 seconds once you're in there. Uh, you just wanna do that as quickly as possible, and it doesn't really matter even if Pavel doesn't tell you what to do yet, because once you leave, he'll basically send you the location to your next spot. And uh, the, the location is always towards uh, the side of the city near Vespucci, so you always just fly there, and then boom, you're ready. So you'll see right in front of us is the safe house. I love that all three of these are in the city, which is super nice. We don't have to fly to Bleed or anything like that anymore. So let's just go right up here. Let's slow down our helicopter. Helicopter, helicopter, and slow down. Okay, perfect. Let's just try and land this without causing 
damage. Uh, oh, perfect. I was a little worried that our blades were going to hit that wall, but we're all good. Run inside, and let's take a picture of the planning board all the way to the back. Go, 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 go. I hate that you can't run in here. It is a bit painful. As you can see, the planning board is right over here, so we're just going to walk right over, pull up our phone, take a picture of it, and boom. That's all we had to do. Send the Pavel, and now we leave. So that took, what, 10 seconds to do in total? And so then we get back in our Sparrow, and we go and steal the Cutting Torch and go back to our Kosatka. I mean, that is incredibly easy to do. So let's just run over here. Go, 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 go. Don't close the door. Perfect. Sometimes I'll, like, run into the door while I'm trying to get in the Sparrow. And it does actually lose, like, a couple seconds because then it closes and then you have to open it back. But as you can see, Pavel gives me the spot. And as I said, it's very close to Vespucci. And then what we'll also do is while we're flying over here, we will request our Kosatka so it will spawn probably right off the beach, which will be perfect. So saving us more time. Okay, let's see. Hopefully it does spawn over here. Perfect. Spawned right off Vespucci Beach. So let's head right over to Del Perro and let's see. Where are these losers? Hello? I don't see them yet. Oh, there they are. Okay, so let's just a boop and a boop and a boop. There you go. And these guys are all basically dead. So let's just land our helicopter. And here we go. Okay. Oh, God. This is the part that's a little painful. Trying not to die. Trying not to die. Die. Yes. Okay. Nice. So let's first of all, let's kill you. Let's grab the plasma. Oh, crap. I told you this one is, is a little painful. I always try to rush it because those cars spawn in almost instantly, which is a bit painful. Um, but yeah, this is the only one that can be a bit of a pain. What I'd suggest to do most of the time is just call in. Oh, wait. Are they? Oh, they don't actually go after you after you die once. Oh. Oh, well, that's easy. I didn't realize that. Well, I guess I'll just grab it. Maybe they get mad at me once I pick it up. Yeah, they do. Okay, well, that makes more sense. Uh, but let's see if I can just take them out really quick. Hello? Oh, why am I holding a, a grenade launcher? There you go. Okay, that guy's a goner. These guys, goodbye, goodbye. And could you die? Thank you. Okay, now the next cars spawn in really fast. So when you clear the first two cars, you got to start moving immediately. You'll notice they're already here, so... It was pretty easy. I mean, we only died once, maybe lost us a minute, and not even a minute, maybe like 20 seconds, and there you go, we're gone. Now we just fly right back to the Kosatka, and that is the Plasma Cutter mission done. That took us maybe two, three minutes. It's just so easy to do these preps at this point. So now we're going to fly back over to our Kosatka really quickly. Here we go, and slow down my helicopter. Boop, 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 and done. There you go, inside, finish that prep. The next one is pretty easy as well. We're going to do the fingerprint cloner next because that's the next kind of painful one. I mean, the fingerprint cloner, you kill four people and that's it. There's no cars that spawn on you as long as you take out the cameras. And actually, if you also disable the cameras before running into the room, it's pretty easy. But half the time, I don't because it's, it's honestly pretty easy in general. So let's just make our way to the front of the boat. You can see why I grab snacks now. That one you do need snacks for. I, sometimes you can call out like an armored Kruma. The reason I don't is down to the fact that you have to still like get your sparrow anyway so i think it's just faster to like die once and get your sparrow out so let's go to the back of the boat again we got to go to the warehouse hopefully it's the uh the closer spawn not really sure though while we're getting in i guess we can see eh, it's not a bad spawn it's not the best either but eh, it, it'll take like a minute to get there because of how fast the kosatka is so let's take her off and go to the warehouse so we've been recording for about 29 minutes which means i started the stopwatch yeah about 29 minutes ago so not bad, 30 minutes in and we've got two preps to go. And then we gotta do the heist. So I would say that we can do all of this in maybe 50 minutes. I mean, completing the entire heist and getting the elite challenge would be great in less than 50 minutes. It takes me about 10 minutes to do the heist. Uh, usually I used to get it done in like five minutes before with the, uh, not with the elite challenge, but you could, you could basically feel your, actually no, you could get the elite challenge because Previously, you could do the wolf safe glitch, and I know there's new glitches, but I just haven't learned them yet, so maybe I'll learn them in the future, but the problem is Rockstar keeps on patching them over and over, so I'm not too worried about the glitches. It's honestly still a really good payout in general. So uh, let's see. The warehouse is right over here, so let's just slow. Oh, oh, God, we're smoking. Well, that's a shame, but it's all good because if I just start up a... Well, actually, I guess I'd have to... I can't disband my CO, so that's, or not my CO, but my motorcycle club, that's a bit of a mistake for me. I don't care if these guys see me, honestly, they, they might kill me, but it's not the end of the world, because you just boop this guy, boop this guy, boop this guy, and there you go. There's one dude left right over here, we're just gonna eat some snacks, and then shoot our gun as we poke it, and there you go, they're all dead. 
So don't even bother disabling the cameras. It takes like half a second. Then we just gotta wait for Pavel to speak to us for 10,000 years. Come on, let me hack the computer. Don't, don't question this. This computer is completely bulletproof. Oh my god. Can you let me hack the computer? Thank you. Okay. This is the easiest hack as well. This one's pretty dang easy. Panther. Boop, 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 boop. And there you go. And now we just leave. So now that we've located the archive, again, pretty dang easy. We just gotta go over to the archive, steal the fingerprint cloner. There's nobody you have to kill after this. This is super duper easy. I'm just hoping our helicopter can survive it. Oh wow. We got a really good archive spawn. I, I haven't seen one that good in a while. We're basically right next to our Kosatka. Perfect. All right, so let's start flying over there. The uh, most common archive spawn is, I would say, like underneath the bridge by the dam over there. It's not a bad location. It's basically right next to this one. But uh, that's the one I, I most commonly get, I would say. But hey, I, I will take a good archive spawn. This makes up for our really bad Valium spawn at the beginning, so... There you go. I'm just hoping that our helicopter holds out. The Sparrow is known for sucking at living. It, it just, it dies very quickly. Oh god, oh god, okay, we're fine. Oh, oh, and I like to fly very fast, which means that I'm usually very close to the ground, but I think we're fine. I mean, even if the helicopter died at this point, we're so close to the Kosatka that I could probably just call in a dinghy and make it there in my Terador. So, uh, where is the archive? I'm guessing it's on, I think it's off to the side of this wall over here. So let's just land it. Oh god. Uh, okay, we're fine. We're fine. The heli still works. I need this sparrow to last. Okay, go, 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 go. Inside the archive. Let's just take out these cameras. Boop. If you take out these cameras, you don't have to deal with guys on ground that try shooting you. There's nobody inside if you if you alert. I tested it, but basically guys in cars will try to shoot at you, which it can be a little painful. So there's no point to really deal with it when you don't have to. So just shoot the cameras out. It takes like half a second. And then the fingerprint cloner always spawns like right over here somewhere. So there you go. Grab the fingerprint cloner. And uh, that was it. That That's the whole mission. So now we're 33 minutes in. We've finished this mission basically, just gotta exit the room, get in our heli, and uh, do the last one, which is the cutting, or not the cutting, no, it is the cutting torch, right? Or is it the plaza? I don't know. We have to get the thing that cuts through the grates, so th that's all we have to do. So let's get in our heli. I'm praying that this helicopter has enough life left in it to make it there. Come on. I believe in you, Sparrow. Up, up, yes. Okay, we've at least made it in the air. That's a bit impressive. I don't know how far we'll make it, but come on. You can do it. Yes. Okay, at this point, we're fine. I mean, even if it dies, we're close enough that it won't matter. So, uh, sweet. Oh, uh, okay, we're fine. We're fine. I'm actually very surprised the Sparrow held out long enough. And... Boop. Perfect. Okay, we are inside of the Kosatka again. So now we come down to the final mission, which is the Cutting Torch. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because the Plasma Cutter is the other one. So this is the Cutting Torch. And uh, Cutting Torch, as I said, literally takes two seconds. We're just going to fly over to a construction site, put on a hard hat, go steal, and then we're done. So let's go to the front of the boat. Come on, go, 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 and uh, kaboom, thank you, and uh, let me go to prep, equipment, and cutting torch, okay, there you go, let's see which construction site we got, uh, not a good one, but it's not bad either, the best one is the one in the center of the city, because it's the closest to our Kosatka, but it's only like maybe an extra 10 seconds of flying. The Sparrow is such a flat flast, yes, such a fast flying vehicle that I don't really mind going the extra distance, and again, I mean, we're speedrunning this, but it's it's not like this is a speedrun of of the end of time. So if we take an extra five minutes to complete this heist, I'm not going to be too mad, especially because I could mess up the heist itself. So uh, let's fly directly over to the construction site. Let us go. Don't want to crash. Actually, you know what? We didn't actually get that bad of a spawn. Our uh, our Kosatka is pretty good location for where we're flying. I didn't actually realize that. Okay, it's not too bad. Let's just fly over Maze Bank. Meow. Now, I'm not actually going to bother grabbing snacks when it comes to the uh, the actual heist because you don't really need snacks for the Kaoprika heist. Even if you get detected, you just leave. So, we're just going to land. Now, this construction site is very easy to get the hard hat for, so we're just going to turn our heli around. Let's bring her over here, and I could shoot. It's very tempting to shoot them all, but we're just going to land it and then literally just run over here. Get the hard hat. Come on. Let me pick it up. And boop. There you go. That's all we have to do. Now we are undetectable. You know, even though we've got blood stains on us and we've killed a bunch of people, you know, they won't ever know. Okay, not in there. Uh, let's go over here. Check this one. Nope. Okay, let's go upstairs. Check the upstairs. 
Oh, 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 oh crap, no, I made a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, darn. Okay, well, uh, mistakes were made by me. That was my fault. <laughs> I shouldn't have ran into that guy. Uh, but it's all good because, uh, I mean, this is still fairly easy. There you go. They're all basically dead. Uh, is there anybody up here left? No. Okay, and we know the cutting torch is right here, so let's grab it. Come on, let me grab a game. Ugh. Yes. Okay, we're all good. <laughs> it took me like an extra five seconds, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's just leave. Let me climb over. And uh, goodbye. You're all losers. Ha ha. Poob. Let's just run over here and uh, let's eat snacks because they are a little mad at me, but yeah, I'm not too worried. And off we go. Well, there you go. That was fairly easy. I don't know why that guy's not shooting me, but haha, -ha, you missed your chance. Bye. There you have it. That was all the preps for the KO Heist done. So it took us 36 minutes in total to do all the preps. If we had gotten a better spawn location for the Valium, that would have saved us at least maybe three minutes easily just by the Fort Zancudo location. And if we had called in a Phantom Wedge, that would have saved us maybe another minute. So yeah, if we were able to shave off about four or five minutes in total, we would have been just about maybe 32 minutes for doing all these preps. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, especially because this this isn't very hard as you can see. Like there's not much effort put into this. So all we're gonna do now is just land our heli right on the back of the Kosatka. And we're going to start at the heist. So yeah, it literally took us only 30 minutes to do all the preps. Now, when it comes to the heist itself, it's, as I said, going to probably take me around 10 minutes in total. Post-editing poob here, I do want to point out I have to redo the heist because somebody just rang my doorbell while I was recording the heist and my doggo went insane, as you'll hear in just a second. So basically, I'm just going to start the stopwatch at 36 minutes, which is when we were initially starting the heist previously and just pretend like we were continuing from then. And squeeze through. Oop, somebody rang my doorbell. Uh-oh. Huh. Well, I'll check that really quick. I guess, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to pause this heist. Well, unfortunately for me, it seems my dog wanted to mess up my KO heist. So I'm just gonna restart it. Honestly, it's just that simple. We were only getting through the drainage tunnel as it was. But, uh, yeah, I want to get the elite challenge, and I'm not sure if it has to do with a time limit or something like that, and I want to make sure that our timing is correct. So, we're at the heist planning screen. Let's go over here. Start up the stopwatch. When we were at the heist planning screen last time, it was about 36 minutes. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. We're just going to add on the time that we just have now to the previous time. So, let's start up the heist. It's pretty easy to do in total. Um, we're just going to do the very easy entrance with the long fin, infiltration point, north dock, drainage tunnel, escape point. We'll just do the airstrip. Doesn't really matter. Time of day. We'll do daytime. Doesn't matter either. And we got to put suppressors. I remember the first time I did this heist with Bat Chat, who's my friend, and uh, we didn't know how to do the heist, so we didn't put suppressors on our weapons. Yeah, it was painful. Somehow, we actually managed to get the main item and leave. I don't know how we did it. But we actually did manage to to make it into his compound and do everything. It was just, it was very hectic is the best way to word it. But now, since we've got the long fin and we're very experienced, we can just do this. What I never understand is the long fin's probably a $2 million boat. Why can't we just sell the long fin we stole? I really don't understand this game sometimes. I really don't. But I guess we are uh, robbing El Rubio with the long fin. So let's make our way over towards the... The uh, drainage tunnel. Try to get there as quickly as possible. This boat is actually ridiculously fast. I mean, look at the speed. I do like this boat. I would definitely drive it if boats weren't useless. That's the only problem. Oh, oh my God. But yeah, the biggest problem I, I have with boats in Grand Theft Auto Online is just there's no point to owning one. I mean, what are you going to do? Have a boat race with your friends? <laughs> I mean, maybe that might actually be fun, but it'd be fun for like 10 minutes and then you'd never ever do it again. Overall, boats are quite useless, so... There you are, we're right over the drainage tunnel. Jump off, let's equip our rebreather as well. And boop, oh wait, it's not me, oh no, I, we already equipped it, Never mind. I'm just a doofus. Okay, swim through, turn, 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 and go into the grate. Cutting the grate is honestly my favorite part about the heist. It's, it's so soothing to just, I don't know why, I just like cutting through it. I think it's kind of soothing, but uh, yeah, I'm probably the only person that thinks that. Let's cut through the pop, the top, now we cut through this part. Want to make sure that these are all cut through. There you go. I hate having to do another uh, pass through. And let's do this. And then boop, 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 
boop, and then we just got the final one here, and we'll be all done, which is honestly great. Okay, and there you have it. Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> all right, so we cut through the grate. Now we actually have to start doing the heist correctly. So let's make our way through to El Rubio's compound. I love swimming through sewage. It's a daily pastime. I mean, man, don't you guys just love swimming through the sweet, salty, succulent taste of sewage? Okay, I'm just, I'm gonna stop with my small talk. Let's just rob El Rubio and save my shenanigans for later. We're going to climb up the very sticky brown ladder. <laughs> Yeah, that is a very sticky looking brown ladder. I hope our character doesn't touch it. Please, please don't. We're not even wearing gloves. Like, that's that's just nasty. But, oh well. I'm not going to question it. Here we go. Now, I'm going to take the path I always take. So, if you've seen my previous videos, it's the same path as always. Uh, but maybe a little bit of a different exit path. So, we're just going to bop this guy. Yay, we got a key card that doesn't help me. Then, we're going to bop this guy. Boop. There you go. And now, we're going to continue our way through. And let's get this guy. Let's wait for him to go through here. And boop. There you go. And now we ignore this camera. Oh, okay. There you go. So let's ignore that camera. Let's pop off to the side. Now we want to get the gate keys, obviously. That's something that's really nice. And I'm pretty sure the gate keys are only held by the guards with the red because those are like El Rubio's closest guards. So there's only like uh, a couple of the guards in general. Let's get this guy. No gate keys from him. Maybe it's the one over here. I mean, we're still going to go up anyway to open up the safe. Yeah, there you go. There's the gate keys. Sweet. Okay. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to get your hands on them. Let's just make our way up top. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And let's wait for this guy to walk around the corner. Hello. Goodbye. I don't really need your ammo, but maybe I'll pick it up on the way out. Now we're just going to make our way over here. Let's open the safe. Boop. And let's see. Give me more than 60k and I'll be happy. Come on. 79 not bad not bad I i'm always like sometimes you get like only 50k so uh getting 79 i'm fine with okay so let's wait for this guard you'll see him down here he we have to wait for him to walk this way uh and then he's gonna uh, he's gonna turn around and then we can make our jump oh yeah not dangerous at all Oof. oh look where i hit my head oh man all right well, let's just keep going uh maybe i shouldn't sit there and stare at my blood all right, open up the gates, boop, and easy. Now, because we're on normal, we only need one hack to open this, which will be pretty dang easy. So here we go. Prince Gloner, version 1.000. Okay, that was incredibly easy. Clone match, that took us literally 10 seconds. And open sesame, boop. Okay, well, let us go, sweet. Now, when it comes to the pink diamond one, it's a 1.3 million dollar payout. On hard, it's 1.4. I'm pretty sure on normal, you lose 100k on the final profit of the, the item. So yeah, unfortunately as well, we're going to lose about 50k on our elite challenge if we do get it, which is the plan. Because obviously, if we don't get the elite challenge, then we're going to uh, lose quite a bit of profit and time because we're going to have to restart it. So let's cut through this. Second pass. Boo. And then on the third pass, I like to do it like this. And then we do it one more there, and it should be all good. Oh, maybe one more. Uh, there you go. Okay. Thank you for the pink diamonds. I appreciate it. I will be leaving now. <laughs> By the way, I just want to point out, that is the largest diamond I've ever seen. Like, the Hope Diamond isn't even that big, and the Hope Diamond's worth, like, $50 million or something ridiculous. So the fact that the pink diamond in this game is not worth, like, a bajillion dollars is dumb. Now, these guards here, I don't even care if they see me. I'm just going to run right over here. They can shoot at me all they want. It doesn't matter. As long as you make it to the door... It, it literally doesn't affect them seeing you. It doesn't fail the elite challenge. Uh, you'll see. There's just It's kind of weird how that works. Don't you love Rockstar on their, their wonderful coding when it comes to this heist? And, you know, nobody would hear me opening these doors at all. Yeah, or, or the guard above me. Hmm. I question this game sometimes. Okay, so first things first. Let's boot this guy. I don't care about his bike. We're going to take the guy's bike that's further up over here. Let's boot this guy. Uh, boop. There you go. Just wanted to make sure we were fully on his head. Now, these two guards, pretty easy to kill as well. We're just going to go right up to them and boop and boop. There you go. And then let's get the security camera. Nice. Okay. So, the first path we're going to do is we're going to go to this little spot here. Oh, no. No, it's this spot. And hopefully, there'll be some coke or something there. You never know what's going to be there, uh, but that's just all based on luck. Sometimes I've gotten nothing, but hopefully that's not today. Oh, God. I was going a little too fast. <laughs> Let's try that again. Get on the bike. 
I hate bikes so much. I mean, the bike is great because you, compared to a car, the bike is multiple times better. It's just funny how everything on this island is meant to kill you, even the plants. Oh, like that plant. <laughs> Let's drive around. Here we go. And then go around here and around here. Okay, we have made it around. All good. Then we're just going to squeeze through here and park. Okay, let's get this guy. Where is he? Hello? Boop. And get the camera. Boop. And then we're just going to drive our bike in here. And... Are you kidding me? We got nothing! Are you... This game. This game. It, it is very irritating sometimes. I can't believe we actually got nothing from that. That is such a sad moment. Okay, well, because El Rubio is, like, right there with his stupid helicopter... Oh, that guy's actually facing this way. Okay. Well, his helicopter's gone at this point, so let's just go back the way I came. Let's come over here. Go up. Back through the mountain. Climbing. Don't hit any trees. Okay, all good. Now, when it comes to leaving this spot, you gotta be careful, because there's a couple guard towers that can see very far, like that one. So you want to make sure that you don't go too fast and jump over where the guard tower can see and don't get spotted by him. Then you just want to keep on going up up and away climb up towards the the ridge here and then uh yeah that's pretty easy to do now we're just gonna make our way towards the i don't know what this is weed coke fields over here either way we're just gonna make our way through you can see where the uh, guard tower can see just make sure that you're not in the cone and just drive like this and then you come over here and pretty easy as you can see to get around there you go and easy so there you go now we just have to make our way down this road and yeah there's his helicopter oh i forgot that there's guards here we got to drive around so that's right let's go let's go over here and not fail this now this guard tower up here is one part that you have to be very careful about oh actually i'm already in like his views so i'm gonna i'm gonna step back a bit before he starts looking this way I, i'm a little too close for comfort so let's drive over here and then let's pull out our gun and hopefully we can bop him in the head and boop there you go perfect i always get nervous with that guy he will see you if you try to jump the bike off this little uh this little side spot here so you need to make sure you clear him but then after he's dead you just jump down here very easy and we continue along our way now we're going to make our way next over here there's this building right here that's where we want to go so what we're going to do is we're going to go down the road so let's make our way to the road here we go keep on going Okay, and you're gonna notice a lot of guards over here. The first guard we're gonna try and take care of is this one up here So let's aim it on his head wait for him to stop moving and there you go Let's just wait. Oh perfect. So that is by far the trick. Actually, let's get the camera too just in case the camera is uh, Is that the camera? I don't actually I know it's right there like I must be losing my mind not able to see it Huh? Well, let me go a little closer, and then I should be able to see it. I'm just losing my mind. Uh, is that it right there? I think that's the camera right there. Maybe not? What? I'm losing my mind, guys. Oh, wait, I see it. It's right there. There it is. Got it. Okay, we're all good. <laughs> it's hard to see that camera from far away. Now, what we're going to do, because we've cleared that guard tower, is just drive around far wide. We're going to go all the way towards the beach, and then... Uh, after this part, there's only one guard you have to be a little careful about, which is this one right here. So we're just going to pull right up to him and boop. There you go. And there you go. That That's just how easy it is. So now we've made it to the stash house, which is right here. Nobody's going to see us. And we do have, well, it's money, I think, right? Oh, no, that's not. That's actually a really good. That's weed and coke. Okay. Cannot complain. I think we're still going to have to fill our bag to the full, which means we're going to have to go over to the, the, uh, the runway, but that's fine. So, let me grab the coke first, and uh, this is going to be worth a lot of money. Yes, look at this payout, 1.4, 8, 6, 7, 9, oh yeah, oh, give me all that money. Okay, that's 1.6 right there, that's about half on our loot bag. And then let's grab this over here, nice, oh, that's what I'm talking about, sweet, keep going, keep going, 1.7, nice, okay. So that's 1.75. We are going to have to go to the runway. You'll notice, though, if that other spot had loot in it, we would have been fine. So now, yeah, we just go to the hangar and we get the last bit. There's no way the hangar's not going to have any. It's got two separate spawn locations. So we're just going to cut through here. Going, going, going. Now, oh, oh, my God. Every time, every time, it's just a stupid bush. Where, where did my bike go? Uh, is it up here? Uh-oh. What? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I think my character... Wow, it went far. Oh, my God. Okay, let's try this again. Um, we're going to just go wide over here. It doesn't really matter. I'm not too worried as it is. So let's just keep going over here. 
Speed, climb up, nice and perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around behind them. I'm just gonna try and make sure I don't fall off the bike again. So there you go. And now we've made it to the, the hangar, which is the last part. I think I'm actually gonna steal the plane. It's a pretty quick way to leave his place, especially if you're already at the hangar. So I might as well take it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive behind it. Uh, it's a pretty easy way to just get around it. Drive all the way behind, come off to the side over here. And then, uh, yeah, we're just gonna clear this guy. So let's drive right here. I wonder if we can just walk through this door. Oh, that would have been amazing if we could. Okay, so let's get this guy. He's gonna be right here. Hello, goodbye. And then, uh, yeah, we're just gonna walk through here. There you go. That's how easy it is. So we do have, uh, it looks like something. What do we have? That is money. And what do we have up top here? Uh, that is definitely better than money. So let's go up top. <laughs> There's no reason not to. Might as well get a little bit extra money. So uh, where's the forklift? Oh, it's over here. I always, I always forget where the forklift is. So let's go and grab this. Boop. And speed. Okay, let's lower it a little bit. Does it have to be fully low to the ground? I never figure this out. Yeah, okay, perfect. Lift up, okay. And then we just reverse it. Come over here, lift it fully up, and uh, boop, there you go. Okay, come over here, and climb up, and climb up again, climb up again, over, and here we go. So, let's get that free old Coke. We should be able to get maybe an extra 50 grand out of this. I mean, it's better than getting the cash down there, so I might as well. I kind of feel sad now that we didn't just grab two Coke sources, but it's fine. At least we're going to get a decent chunk anyway. So here we go. Grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. Actually, not bad. I got about 60K out of that. So we have a $1.8 million cut and also the Elite Challenge, if we do this right. Uh, when we add all this together, that's actually pretty dang good. And if we had done this on hard, we would have gotten an extra pretty decent chunk as well. Um... So yeah, I mean, if we had done this on hard mode, we would have gotten an extra probably 200k from secondary and main payouts, plus an extra 50k from just doing the elite challenge. Let me just bop this guy. There you go. So uh, easily, we would have come home with around maybe a 2.1, 2.2 million dollar payout if we had done this on hard. Something I find really funny is when you open up this fence, your character literally levitates off the ground. I've uh, Good job, Rockstar. There's nothing else to really say there. But let us open up the Volts Lab box. Here we go. And as I said before, these are pretty easy to do. So let's see, 144. Well, obviously, to get 144, the 9 is going to have to connect. And then, yeah, the 4 is going to have to go to the 0, and the 5 left to go to the 10. Yeah, that should be good. Nice! There you go. 144. And with that, we are going to be able to escape with the Dodo. Air defenses are turned off. It's so easy to do the KO heist. It really is. You can see it's been about 15 minutes so far, which isn't bad either. So let's escape KO Perico and get this money once and for all. Now we have a $1.8 million take. So with a fencing fee of about 200000 I would say that in total we're probably going to make around 1.5, 1.6 million if we get the Elite Challenge as well, which shouldn't be too bad at all. But uh, yeah, we are definitely getting off this island. Hopefully this pathing is good. Let me know in the comments if there is a faster way to do the pathing. I just do it the fastest way I've been able to figure out on my own, which is steal the bike, go through the compounds, steal the stuff as you go through it, and then you're done. But overall, we very clearly showed that you can do the entire KO Perico heist in literally less than 50 minutes. It was 15 minutes to do the heist, uh, or at least it should be around 15 minutes. And we've also done all the setups in 37 minutes, which is just about 15 minutes. And if we had done this a little bit faster, if I owned a Phantom Wedge, or even with me not owning a Phantom Wedge, we definitely could have cleaned up time here and there, done a little bit faster on certain spots if I had done a little bit better driving. Overall, the fact that we were able to deal the entire heist in less than 50 minutes and make easily 1.5 plus million dollars is pretty insane when you think about it. The only thing I'm a little worried about is I'm pretty sure the Elite Challenge for normal is 15 minutes. And we were just about 15 minutes on the clock when we started this heist with the stopwatch, so it's going to be really, really close. Let us see. Transaction pending, heist passed. All right, so we got platinum. I don't even know why I said that. Obviously, we got platinum. We're the only person in it. So we got a $1.6 million take. But if we do get the Elite Challenge, then we'll get a 1.65. Complete under, oh my god, yes! We beat it by four seconds. Zero hacks failed, perfect. And full loot bags, yes. All right, that's what I'm talking about. So we got an extra 50k, not bad at all. 
I'll take it. It would have been a nice 100k plus another like 200k if we'd been able to do this heist on hard. So we would have gotten maybe around 2 million. But even then, 1.6 million dollars is pretty dang good, especially because I'm pretty sure I had like 18 and a half million dollars right before doing this heist. So I'm gonna have 20 million dollars on my account. It'll be the first 20 million I've actually made on this account and kept without spending. I'm planning on keeping a lot of the money though because. Uh, when it comes to the next DLC, which is apparently going to come out near December, I do obviously want to, uh, I do want to have some money for the DLC, and I want to buy it on my Broke to Billions account. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the KO Perico heist. Hopefully, you learned a thing or two, and if you enjoyed today's video, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below, as it helps out the channel a crazy, crazy amount. So let's deposit this money, and yeah, I should just have over 20 million deposit. Yes! There you go. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.